It's not just control of Congress up for grabs in these elections. Two seats on the North Carolina Supreme Court are up for election in races that could affect voting rights and abortion access for years to come. 538's Kaylee Rogers has more on that. We're all familiar with the Supreme Court and how powerful it is. But each state has its own Supreme Court, which is also extremely influential in determining how far laws can go including laws that govern some of the biggest issues in the country, like abortion, education, and guns. While Congress and the president determine who sits on the U.S. Supreme Court, in most states, justices are elected. Here's a look at the race in North Carolina, an election that could have big implications for voter protection in the state. For years, the North Carolina Supreme Court has battled with the state legislature over elections. The court has repeatedly rejected district maps drawn by the General Assembly when it found them to be so extremely gerrymandered that they were unconstitutional. The U.S. Supreme Court will rule on the gerrymandering case this fall, and it could impact how much power state legislatures across the country have over redistricting and elections. There are two seats up for election on the North Carolina Supreme Court this fall. They're both currently held by Democrats, one of whom is running for re-election. Right now, Democrats hold a slim 4-3 majority on the court, so Republicans need to flip just one seat to hold a majority until at least 2024, when the next justice's term ends. While politics always plays somewhat of a role when it comes to placing justices on the Supreme Court, North Carolina actually had nonpartisan judicial elections for about 20 years. But in 2016, the Republican-led assembly changed the rules. Now each party has a candidate on the general election ballot, along with information about a candidate's party affiliation. The Republican Assembly also changed the rules around funding judicial elections. They used to be publicly funded, but now candidates need to privately fundraise, opening up all kinds of thorny ethical issues and making the races increasingly expensive. As of the most recent filings, Democrats are greatly outraising the Republican opponents. Of course, money isn't everything, even in politics. In fact, in the 2020 election for Supreme Court Chief Justice, Republican Paul Newby managed to beat Democratic incumbent Sherry Beasley by about 400 votes, despite Beasley raising about double what Newby did. Whoever wins will likely have huge sway in North Carolina politics, as the court is almost certain to hear more election-related cases, and possibly cases on abortion. With the stakes as high as they are, these won't be races either party is leaving to chance. And Kaylee Rogers joins me live now for more on this. So Kaylee, what are you watching out for today in these two races for North Carolina Supreme Court? Right, so both those races are really interesting to watch. One of them is an open seat. And so and both the Republican and the Democrat running for that seat are really, really strong candidates. So that could be that opportunity for the Republicans to, to flip a seat and take over a majority on the court. The other seat is um, you know, held by a Democrat currently, and she is running again. She's the incumbent candidate. And the Republican candidate in that race is a little weaker. He's never actually served as a judge before. So that's also one to watch. We're expecting you know, that the Democrat would probably win again if they uh, Republican wins in that race, it would be kind of an upset. So that they're both interesting in kind of different ways here. So can you elaborate on why these North Carolina Supreme Court elections could have such a big impact on voting rules there? Right. So in North Carolina, like in every state, the state legislature is the one that makes the rules around how elections are run, whether you need an ID to vote, whether you can vote early or register on the same day that you vote. All those rules are done by the state legislature. And typically, you know, if voters think that a rule that's been passed is uh, unconstitutional or unfair, the way that they fight that is by going to courts and filing lawsuits. And so if the court is also controlled by Republicans, as the state legislature is currently in North Carolina, you might consider that those two uh, groups would, would agree on whether or not a law is, is constitutional and it could make it more of a a coalition between those two bodies. So what other big cases could this court take on, depending on who gets elected? Right, so I mean, abortion obviously is something that we're wondering about. Abortion is currently legal in North Carolina, but there have been a couple bills that the legislature brought forward. Those were vetoed by the governor, who's a Democrat, but there's a chance that the legislature could get a super majority tonight uh, in that race. And what that means is that they would have the ability to overturn vetoes that the governor issues. And in that case, if they do start passing restrictions on abortion, law, it's almost certain that there will be legal challenges and those would go to the Supreme Court. Could this have an impact outside of North Carolina? Uh, not this race in particular, but there is another case out of North Carolina that's going to the U.S. Supreme Court this fall. And that obviously, because it's the U.S. Supreme Court, would affect 
all states. So in this case, it has to do with redistricting, which is where they draw the maps, the new districts every 10 years. And there was a, a dispute, a legal dispute that's going to the Supreme Court now. Basically, depending how the Supreme Court rules on that, it could make it harder when voters bring those challenges to court to get any leeway. It could basically um, put more power in the hands of the state legislatures rather than state courts. All right. Kaylee Rogers, thank you. Thanks for having me. And our friends at 538 have complete election data, forecast models, and analysis throughout the day, night, and in the coming days and weeks. So check out their website at 538.com or you can just scan that QR code below. We also have ABC News special election night coverage led by David Muir, Lindsay Davis, and the entire political team that kicks off tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on ABC News Live. Don't miss it.